Good morning, Michelle Arnott here at Diamond Rock Glass Studio. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I would like to walk you through all the steps of how to cut out and build and assemble a spinner. So I have for the last few months made quite a few spinners using different jigs and different things that I've seen other people using. So today I want to walk you through not only how to draw a pattern, but how to assemble it. And if you have looked into making spinners, you have probably seen a jig like this. Um, so I found that this is very necessary to have to make your life much easier to assemble a spinner. This is one that my husband has made for me out of 4 by 4 lumber. Um, so a spinner consists of six squares and once you get each of those six squares cut out and soldered together, you're going to put one here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six squares. So, and I'm going to show you how those get assembled later. Um, but like I said, that's four by four uh, lumber. So a spinner can be as small as a one inch square. I've seen even where people use a one inch square bevel and they foil them, assemble them on the jig and solder them together. And those are super nice, um, super simple. The ones that I'm going to be drawing out today, like I said, you can get as big as the four by four, but... Um, the spinners that I've been making are about three and a half inches. So I'm going to show you how I draw those out with grid paper um, and then how I cut, foil, and assemble each of these. So we're going to make four of them today. Um, some of them have bevels in them. And if you are new to stained glass or you need a refresher, please feel free to go back to my very first video, How to Make a Sun Catcher. I go through in detail every step of the stained glass process. So from picking out your pattern, your glass, how to cut the glass, grind, foil, solder, and then finally finish your piece. It's about a 55 minute video, but it does really detail in everything, all the steps of stained glass. So in this video, I'm gonna kind of go, you know, skip through some of those steps and just show you how to, how what I'm doing and how to build and assemble a spinner. And then at the end of this, I will have on my website, www.diamondrockglassstudio.com, uh, a kit. Let's get started, and I'll kind of recap at the very end. So here are the four patterns that I'm going to include in the first kit that's going to be available on my website. Um, what I used is this square here. They sell these mini squares at Menards or Home Depot. Um, these come in real handy not only to draw our pattern, but you're going to see I'm going to use this later when I assemble each square. So I have drawn out um, and a ruler uh, it helped me draw these patterns out. So the one thing that these all have in common is at least one 90 degree angle. So that is necessary um, to build a spinner. You can see um, this one has four 90 degree angles. The rest of them just have one 90 degree angle, which um, as long as you have one, you're good. So um, on my first one here, I'm actually going to number and letter it um, because I am going to want to cut all of these apart. So let me go ahead and number this one. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three. Now this one in particular, I am using this diamond bevel. So I didn't actually need to number that one because it's just gonna be the bevel. Um, but I am gonna put A on this one. This is gonna be my pattern A. So my A's is gonna make one spinner. Here's a little um, gem that's gonna go up here. I'm gonna label this one B. So my B's are gonna be a spinner. I'll label this one C. So my C's are gonna be a spinner. And this one, I didn't need to number that one, is gonna be a bevel. So I want to label these D. So D will be a spinner. So when you get this, um, if you're ordering from my website, you will get this actual pattern, I'm going to photocopy it with cardstock and you're going to cut the cardstock pieces out and you will get a second copy just in some thin paper to use as your template. So um, 
the next step is for me to cut these pieces out. Okay, so as you can see, I have my two patterns here. Um, this is my template. And so I will set that aside. And um, the pattern pieces from the cardstock I have cut out. So see, once you cut them out, they're, um, it's a good thing that I have them numbered and lettered. So the first one I'm gonna do is my A. So as you can see, um, the A is this one here. So I just need one A and three A. And remember the, this number two here is gonna be all from bevels. So I actually have six bevels that will fit in that spot right there. So I'm gonna set this aside. And this is the glass I chose to make this first spinner with. So again, I gotta find 1A and 3A. So I gotta cut each of these six times. So that's what I'm gonna do next. And I'll set all these aside. And notice I have a silver <coughs> Sharpie that's gonna show up on the darker glass. And again, this is my smooth side that I want to um, be tracing on and cutting on. This side is a little rougher. So my glass is upside down, so my pattern pieces are upside down. So I'm gonna go ahead and just trace this one six times, and then I'll trace this one six times. Okay, so now I have all of my 1A and all of my 3A cut out. I'm gonna go back to my template. And I think um, since I'm going to be making four spinners today, um, I kinda like to do all my cutting all at once and then do all of my grinding all at once. Um, and I'm at my work studio right now, that, so this is where I make my mess is at work. Um, but the foiling part, I can neatly bring all my foiling home. So I, and plus, a foiling is something you never want to be in a rush for. So you might as well <clears throat> just realize you got to sit and, you know, do a really good job with your foiling. I usually take that part home, and sometimes I do it in front of the TV. Um, but all my cutting and grinding almost always is done here at the studio. So, I'm gonna see what I can get done today, um, and I'm sure I'm gonna be able to get all this cut and grinded, if not all foiled even today. Um, the exception of doing the foiling at work is, um, or while I'm here at the studio is, like today I'm doing a video, so um, since I'm trying to work on an instructional video, I might try to get this done, and so I may do some foiling here. So here's, um, my first spinner, all the cutting is done. And again, um, so there's six, one, six, six of the one A, six of the three A, and then I have six of this number two, which is just these diamond shaped bevels. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside and then I'm gonna get out my one B and two B for this next one. So here's my one B and my two B. So I will, <clears throat> set these aside and I am going to sweep my board again um, and then I think the glass that I'm going to do for this heart this heart spinner I think I will mix um, this purple um, and here's the textured side the textured side has to go down so I'm first going to trace all of my 1B on the purple and then 2B is gonna be from the clear. I did wanna point out there is, um, the heart goes together here. You wanna make sure this, this side is longer than this inside straight part. So if you are putting this like this um, on the long part, make sure you stay consistent. So you go like this, don't go like that. Um, don't mix it up. Um, you wanna stay the same. Um, I hope that makes sense. So 
now I have all my 1B and 2Bs cut. Um, is that right? No, that's right. So you have to be careful um, not to get these backwards because this one is really easy. One side is longer, the outside one is longer than the inside one. So make sure you get that part correct. See, now that's correct. And this is where the little bead is gonna go. So I've got A and B done. Now I am going to move on to my spinner C. So I need one, two, three, and four C, all my C's. Okay, so I have all the pieces rough cut. I thought that I was recording this one, which I was actually, but it was in slow motion and I didn't know how to fix it, but I figured not a big deal for you to watch me fast forward through cutting this. So the next step is to grind each of these pieces. So I'm gonna do that next. Um, and before I foil it, but after I grind it, I am going to fit each square into this uh, into this square to make sure that this 90 degree angle um, is fitting up close enough um, and I want to make sure that it's meeting up to this square if there's any gaps I'm gonna have it be within and fill that in with solder but that's my next step to get all the grinding done um, and then maybe I'll slow it down a little bit uh, before I get to the foiling part Okay, so I have all of the grinding done and I have all of the foiling done. I did, before I did the foiling, put each 90 degree angle in the square to make sure that it was fitting up in here really well. So <clears throat> as I was foiling these beads, it occurred to me that um, these can be a little bit tricky. So I just wanted to show you one way to foil these, or how I foil these. Um, so I just hold them a little bit differently than I hold um, the glass that I'm foiling. So here's my foil. Um, and I start it, I hold it like this in between my fingers like this. And I just wrap it up like this. So, um, and then I just tear it off there. And then I first uh, press it down just with my fingers and then I just use this tool any kind of fid to go over the top and smooth that out and burnish it really well I go over the sides um, I used to really dislike foiling these gems because they're a little tricky but I've done so many of them now that um, I don't dislike it so much anymore but it, I just thought I'd show you how I foil beads I'm sure there's more little tricks and ways to do it but that's how I do it so there is a foiled gem so my next step is to lay all of these squares out um, so I'll have 6 12 18 24 squares to make four spinners and then I'm going to start with my soldering so the first thing I'm going to do is tack each of the 24 squares first just so I have 24 solid units and then I'll go in and do all the soldering. So as you can see, I'm placing each square in the square, um, making sure that it's meeting up again on this square. And if there's any gaps, I want it to be within. So now I'm gonna do that to all 24 squares. So I will have 24 units that I will finish the soldering after I'm done with just the tacking here. 
They're all tack soldered now and I just have them stacked on top of each other. The ones that do not have a bevel, I can stack right on top of each other. The two that I have with a bevel, um, I, do, I have stacked in like twos or threes. Um, I'm now attaching this bead to the top of the heart. Um, it was a little, I, I wanted to get the heart all together first to make it a little easier to put the bead on. So I'm gonna put the bead on next and then I am going to continue to solder each square, front, back, and sides, and then I'm gonna be ready for assembly, which I think a lot of you wanted to watch this video just for the assembly part. So it's the beauty of um, technology today. You can just press the button and fast forward through all this. If, if you already know it, um, you can just fast forward through this and get to the assembly part. I'm ready for assembly of all four of the spinners. So this is the jig that I am going to use and I really hope that my camera is going to be able to capture what it is that I'm doing. I'll try to keep looking to make sure that um, you can see what I'm doing. Um, so the first thing is I took these two, um, you have to be careful with the placement. Um, uh, I want these two square bevels to meet up. And so what I'm doing is um, I'm holding these and I'm going to um, just tack these two pieces together here first. Um, so I have to hold them 
Um, and I, I have not washed these squares yet. Um, there's still flux on them. I'm not going to wash it until the very end. So I'm going to try and tack this um, in a couple of spots. Make sure that it's held together. So once I do that, I am going to, with this jig, you can then lay it down. See how I have it laid down? Now I can get a better seam on this here. So I'm going to run some solder right, oh, let's see, right on this seam here. I should have my glasses on. I can barely see what I'm doing. Um, I will find my, oh, they're right here, good. Okay, so I got that together, and you can always go over this and fix up what doesn't look good. But, so these are together. I am going to eventually um, solder the back side, but let's go on um, with our third square. Again, making sure that these bevels are together. So, um, and I'm not going to keep this all the way down. I'm going to lift it up off the surface just a little bit and slide this one so it's got um, the correct angle. You want, you want to um, be able to get some of that foil soldered on the side and on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and drop some solder in that corner, that inside corner there. And I don't care if it looks gloppy, I can fix that all up later. So yeah, that's nice and gloppy, but um, I can see that um, that's a good angle and I've got good foil um, on both sides. So um, I'm just going to put a little bit more on there, see how I can turn this jig. Okay, so then I'm going to keep adding squares and I can fix this up later. Um, so there's, there's three of the squares together. Um, so let's continue with this one, and it really doesn't matter. I could put this one here next, but I'm going to go ahead and um, do this one next. So I'm going to, again, hold this up just a little bit and slide this one under there. So there's the proper, there's, you're going to see the soldered foil on, on this side and the soldered foil on the bottom. You don't want either of these all the way down or all the way to the corner. Um, and actually, rather than um, risk screwing it up by flexing it and moving it, I'm just going to tack some solder in there. I can always fix it up later. Tack a little bit more. Like I said, these have not been washed yet, so there's still flux on there. It's not like there's no flux. So now I'm going to um, tilt this this way and get some more solder in here. Okay, so now I have four squares together. So now I need these two squares to fit in here. So this one will go here like this. So what's nice about this jig is on the back, there's all these angles so you can turn it um, to any position really that you need it. Um, so it's super handy. I've tried some other things. Um, which I'll show you in a second, different things that you can use. Um, but I have found by far that this jig makes your life the easiest. Um, in fact, I would not want to make, probably, <laughs> unless I had a lot of practice, I probably would not want to really make spinners unless I had this jig. So um, let's get this one on. And it's, it's kind of tricky um, to hold it into place sometimes, um, but once you get that first drop of solder to kind of tack it, um, then it's pretty easy. Like now, um, but rather than get a good seam on there and make it really super stable, um, I am going to fit this one in here 
in case I need a little bit of give, I mean, you don't really have a lot of give when it comes to these, but um, I mean, you get have a little bit more. Hope you can see this okay. Um, all right, so I'm gonna solder now in here. All right, so the only seam that I haven't attached yet is right here. So I'll go ahead and put some solder there. Um, so now this is going to be kind of weak, but you can kind of see I've got my spinner. Now I want to um, put more solder on all of these seams and then I'm going to flip it over and do the same on the inside. So let me do these outside and inside seams while it's on this way. And um, I have not washed any of these pieces yet. I will wash it once and that's at the very end. And it's up to you if you want to mess with patina and um, polishing. I personally just wash them and put them up and watch them spin. Um, but that's totally up to you. Whoops, I think I just turned this. So this is looking good. I'm going to take this off and I'm going to now flip it and do the other side. I still need to get this to center right here. Um, so here is another item that I have found is very helpful but not necessary, um, but these are called handy wedges. Um, and I will sell these on my website. It won't be part of the kit, because like I said, they're not super necessary, but um, what I found them really handy for, well, first of all, you can um, put these wedges like this, and it will, it's a perfect 90 degree angle. Here's a 90 degree angle like this, so you could, um, Set your thing here and get this seam. So it does come in handy, but what I have been using it for is to get the to get the center filled in. This this material, whatever this handy wedge is made of, it doesn't melt. So it kind of plugs that hole. The next step is to wash this. Oh, actually, no. The next step, um, this is going to um, hang and spin from like this, not here, but here. So I'm going to get some wire and then we're going to attach it to right here. And this is right on a seam. Um, I'll show you how to, how to attach a wire for a hanger. Um, on a spinner that doesn't happen to have a seam. This one is going to make it really easy on us. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more of that um, maybe on the next one. I'll show you um, how to do that. Okay, so I'm just using 20 gauge wire. And um, in the kits that I will have on my website, I'm going to include some 20 gauge wire. And then I'm going to twist it. Um, like this, and then I'm going to cut off the excess there, kind of smash it together, and then I am going to attach it to one of these points. It needs something to hold it with because uh, it conducts heat so well. So, um, so now it's ready to be washed and um, add a swivel to this, which I'll show you in a little bit. But this first one is about done. So 
Um, let's see how I can navigate through the next three. Um, but I'll for sure show you how to add a hook onto one where um, the seam isn't right there. Like sometimes for this one, for example, you're gonna have to run wire from here all the way around. Here's your loop there all the way down to get into that seam. Um, so you just kind of got to be, um, it's a little tricky, but um, it's not difficult. And I'm using 20 gauge wire, so it bends pretty easy and it's plenty strong to hold um, your spinner. I washed all four spinners in the sink. I'm really happy with how these all turned out. This one is so pretty and colorful. Um, the last thing, um, or one of the last things that I have to show you is how to attach um, the swivel, which is um, what's gonna allow it to spin freely. So um, I think there's different types of swivels, but the one that um, I will include with the kit that's on my online store is probably going to look like something like this. So um, actually it's kind of like a baby pin. Um, so there um, you just want to pin it in there, uh, secure it back up. Uh, and then there's a little loop you can add, attach a chain or whatever. Um, but then you can see it's now can spin freely. So I have three more videos that I have been trying to airdrop into my iMac and it's giving me issues. Rather than try and fix those issues or figure out what it is, I've decided that I have shared enough information. Hopefully I have shared enough information to give you confidence to uh, assemble a spinner. I hope um, I hope I did. So um, I just wanted to recap, like I said I would, what will be included in the kit. Um, you will get a sheet of paper with these four patterns on it. And the glass that you saw in this video is what I'm gonna keep consistent with what's gonna go into the kit. So you're gonna get the clear glass. Oh, I have it here. So you're gonna get clear glass, this pretty green glass. You're going to get this uh, purple-ish color um, in a more true purple. And then you're going to get um, that teal color. And you're going to get enough of that glass um, to make six to eight spinners. So all the details will be on my website. Um, again, diamondrockglassstudio.com. Um, thank you for watching. And um, the ending of this, I'm going to show you what my Memorial and Independence Day display was, which was a bunch of red, white, and blue spinners. I may make that into a kit, so watch my website. Um, and please feel free to comment in the comment section what you find helpful and what you would like to see. So again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.